we have come to draw. Zini preta zika toza li predi asha. Leke teke predi zoni la katini moli de predi. I've come to draw, I've come to draw, I've come to draw. Is somebody speaking to the living God this morning? Father, this morning I've come to draw. To draw from the throne of grace. To draw from the heavens. I have come to draw. This morning I have come to draw. This morning I have come to draw. I have come to draw. I have come to draw. Come on, somebody speak to the Lord. I've come to draw of you, Lord. This morning I've come to draw of you. Grace money I've come to receive of you. Grace money I've come to be blessed by you. Grace money I've seen in your head to shine among the brave and the brave. Fine, you fine. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. The seed. Which month of October or do? And he said, "Return." And if you hear the voice again, tell him, "Yes, speak, Lord, for your servant listeneth." By the time Samuel returned and he heard that voice, and he said, "Speak for your servant listeneth," that was the transformation of his life. Amen. By that singular encounter, look at verse nineteen of First Samuel chapter three. By that singular encounter in verse nineteen, the Bible said, "And Samuel." Grew, and the Lord was with him, and did and did let none of his words fall to the ground. All of Israel, from Dan even to Bathsheba, they knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. That young man was ordinary until that day he had that encounter, and by that encounter that he had, his life was transformed. By that encounter that he had, there was a deposit of spiritual potential. There was a deposit of spiritual gift. There was a deposit that came upon his life that was activated on that very day. And everyone that didn't know him before began to know him because he had an encounter. By the encounter that is coming upon your life this morning, those who never knew you before will begin to know you in the name of Jesus. By the encounter that is coming your way this morning, I decree those who never knew you before will begin to know you. In the name of Jesus Christ, there was a deposit in his life. Any time God speaks to a man, something wakes up in that man. Hallelujah! We also saw an example of divine encounter in the life of Peter in Luke chapter five, verse one to eleven. Luke chapter five, verse one to verse eleven. The Bible said it came to pass on a certain day. Let's read it. Let me not just quote it. Luke chapter five, from verse one to verse eleven. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had Left speaking, he said unto Simon, "Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw." And Simon answering said unto him, "Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net." And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. Verse seven. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, "Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord." For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which we, they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, "Fear not; from henceforth you will catch men." Amen. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and they followed him. Again, we see divine encounter here. Peter had toiled all night and caught nothing. He had labored, sweated, wasted time, and there was no result to show for it. But as the day breaked, Jesus Christ came there, and he had an encounter with Jesus. And by that encounter, the Bible says there was so great a harvest. Amen. Amen. 
There was so great a harvest that Peter began to tell Jesus, he said, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. I'm not worthy for you to be here. Depart from me. And Jesus Christ said, the essence of this encounter, the essence of God meeting you today is to transform your life. From, you have been going after fish, you have been a fisher of fish for years, say, but from today you will begin to catch men. Hallelujah. There was a promotion. There was a change of level. That is what an encounter does. An encounter brings a change of level. An encounter brings what? A change of level. Just like it did for Peter. There is someone here this morning. By divine encounter, your level is changing in the name of Jesus. I say by divine encounter, your level is changing in the name of Jesus. Let's take one more example from the life of Paul. In Acts chapter 9 from verse 1. We all know Paul, Saul of Tarsus. That was the man that was persecuting the church. That was the man that was moving up and down, killing believers, slaughtering people who said that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That was the man who would not want to hear anyone mention anything about Jesus. And so the Bible said in Acts chapter 9 verse 1, that he was by reason of, he he went to to, to the leaders and he got letters of permission to go down to Damascus and to arrest believers and to bring them back to Damascus to be persecuted and killed and so he was given the permission they were very happy but while he was on his way going the bible says that all of a sudden he had an encounter with the sun amen and the sun hit him very hard he fell to the floor and he had the voice of god that was heaven meeting with earth that was divinity meeting with humanity so so why are you persecuting me say who are thou oh lord that i have persecuted say, i am jesus whom you persecuted it is hard for you to kick against the priest the the, the 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 consequence of that encounter was that paul who was a slayer paul who was a destructive man became a constructive man paul who was wasting lives began to give life Paul who was persecuting the saints began to stand with the saints. That is what an encounter is capable of doing. You don't know what can happen to the life of a man until he has an encounter. That is why anytime I go anywhere and I used to know anybody that who is now changed completely, now a pastor or now a serious believer who used to be very wayward, maybe when we're back in secondary school or maybe while we're back in the university, who didn't look like anything at all, but suddenly you are hearing that the person is serving God in one capacity or the other. I like to talk with them because my question I usually ask them is what happened? And then by the time they open their mouth, you begin to hear a series of divine encounters. Nothing changes the life of a man like divine encounters. Nothing empowers, nothing gives you an encounter with the glory of God like divine encounter. Nothing makes you to understand what the glory of God is all about like divine encounter. So let us ask ourselves the question, what happens in divine encounters? What happens in divine encounters? Number one, man is connected to a spiritual heritage. In divine encounter, man is connected to what? A spiritual heritage. In Matthew chapter 17 verse 1 to 5, Matthew 17 verse 1 to 5, Jesus Christ took Peter, James and John and he went up into the mountain to pray. And the Bible said while Jesus was in prayers, he was transfigured. His countenance became very bright. And while that was happening, the Bible said we had the Eli- um, Elijah and Moses appeared to him. Amen. Amen. Elijah and Moses did what? Appeared to him. And they began to communicate with him of what his future was going to look like. Of the death on the cross of Calvary. What happened there was that there was a, a, there was, there was, there was a connection to spiritual heritage. In case you don't understand that, in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 19, 1 Kings chapter 19 and we are in verse 19. The Bible says that Elisha, the son of Shaphat, 
was plowing oxen, was, was in the business of his father. He was taking care of his father's business. All of a sudden, Elijah the prophet passed by him and threw the mantle upon him. And Elijah, Elijah went after him and said, Sir, allow me to return and then bid my family goodbye and then I will go with you. And Elijah said, what have I done with you? to you? Go back to your family. Amen. But you see, by reason of that encounter of that day, that the cloth was thrown upon Elijah, Elisha, the Bible said in the book of Second Kings and chapter 2, that when Elijah was about to go up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah, Elijah said to Elisha, he said, ask me what I will do for you before I be taken from you. And Elisha said, I need a double portion of your spirit. I need an encounter. And Elijah said, if you can see me as I'm taking off, it shall be yours. But if you don't, if you are not serious enough for the encounter, you won't have it. Of course, Elisha saw him be taken out. He said, my father, my father, the chariot of, um, the, the, of, of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And the Bible said, and the man to fail. That was a divine encounter that changed the life of Elisha. That young man was a businessman taking care of the father's yoke of oxen. But his life was translated by reason of the encounter that he had on that day. I am praying for somebody here this morning that God will give you an encounter that will cause your life to begin to count in the name of Jesus. I say God will give you an encounter that will cause your life to begin to count in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are encounters that connect you to spiritual heritages. A couple of years ago, when I finished from secondary school, I was, I, I, I was, I was desirous to know what I will do in life. And so I just moved around. As my father was privileged then, he had a lot of means, so he, he visited managers of banks and top persons, so he, I was privileged to go with him, because I was at home after my wife, amen, waiting for the admission after we wrote jam. And whenever I entered any office with him, and I saw the highest office there, I tried to picture myself being in that kind of place. It wasn't possible. No matter the office looked like, I said, no, I can't be here. But I knew within me that I wanted to be an accountant. I knew within me that that was what I wanted to pursue after. But one day, while that was boiling in my heart, one day I had a dream. 7 p.m. in the evening. As I came back in the, after, in the evening, I just lay down resting in my little room. All of a sudden, the wall became a screen and I saw little chicks feeding on the floor. And as I observed them, there was no mother hen with them. Then I heard a voice from the screen. He said, these little chicks, they have no mother hen to feed and to protect them. They need somebody. And everything vanished. I still didn't understand what that meant. To me, at that time, I felt I was going to be very wealthy to use my money to feed people. That was my interpretation. I still didn't understand it. Until the day on the 4th of April 2013. At about 3 a.m. when I was lying down and the Lord gave to, came to me in a vivid encounter. And that gave, a, that gave another cause to my life. That connected me to a spiritual heritage. That gave me an understanding of some things that were happening in my life at that time that I didn't understand. Amen. There are many things happening in and around you now that you don't understand. It takes an encounter to understand the mysteries around your life. Is somebody here this morning? It takes an encounter. And every time till date when God gives me an encounter, even up to yesterday, God gave me an encounter that made me to remember what he told me so many years ago in a revelation. And I began to understand. He said to me, son, this is that time I spoke to you nearly 10 years ago. When I wasn't a pastor at all. I wasn't even near anything pastor. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So an encounter connects you to spiritual heritage. It takes you from where you are being and connects you to where you ought to be. For instance, in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, the Bible says, And the Lord has said to Abraham, Get out of your father's house from their kingdom, from their brethren, from their country, to a land that I will show you. Because physically, Abraham was in the house of Terah, his father, but spiritually he didn't belong there. 
And God gave him that encounter in order to disconnect him from the physical heritage and bring him into the spiritual heritage. And God said, as you go, whosoever blesses you, I will bless. Whosoever curses you, I will cut. And verse 4 says, and Abraham departed. And by the time you follow through, we discover that Abraham became the blessed of God. Abraham became the friend of God because the encounter gave him a shift. There was a connection to a spiritual heritage. There was a disconnection from a physical heritage. I want to let you know this morning that God is about to connect you to a spiritual heritage that will change your life forever. That will change your life forever in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. What happens in divine encounter number two? When in divine encounter man is connected to divine direction. Man is connected to what? Divine direction. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 15 to 21. 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 15 to 21. There we see a very wonderful story of a young boy called Saul. He was the least in his father's house. And his father's house was the least in the land. Amen. Amen. And the father's donkeys went missing. So Saul said, let me go and look for my father's donkeys. But in the process of going to look for the father's donkey, in summary, he met with a man called Samuel. Amen. Who was a representative of God at that time. And God had told Samuel that there was a young man that you're going to meet about this time tomorrow. And when that young man comes, he said, anoint him because I have a destiny for him. Because I want to redirect his life. So what happened there was that Saul took the oil in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1 and poured it upon the head of this young man called Saul. And by that oil, the life of Saul changed forever. Let us see the things that happened in the life of Saul after the anointing came upon him. Are you still here this morning? 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Are you seeing that? That young man became a captain. Not a captive, but a what? A captain. Verse 2. When you depart from me today by reason of this anointing, you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin of Zerza. And they will say to you, the asses, the donkeys that you went to look after, they have been found. Do you see the impact of the oil? Do you see the impact of the encounter he had? What was lost was found. Whatever you lost before you came here this morning is found in the name of Jesus Christ. Say the asses you went to have been found, and your father has left the care of the asses, and he's sorrowing for you, saying, Where shall I do? What shall I do for my son? Verse 3. Then you will go forward from there, and you shall come to the plain of Tabor, and you shall meet the three men who going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three keys, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine, and they will salute you. Are you seeing that? Honor and respect came by reason of that encounter. Not just that the Bible said, and they will give you two loaves of bread you shall receive of their hand. That is the release of favor. I'll talk about that briefly. And they will salute you and give you two loaves of bread which you shall receive from their hand. After that you will come to the hill of God where is the garrison of the Philistine and it shall come to pass where you have come thither to the city that you shall meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them and they shall prophesy and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and you shall prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Encounter changes you into another man. Amen. Santa Shata. Encounter changes you into what? Another man. I used to be very slow. Amen. My mom would complain then. Why are you slow? Amen. Down to second second school SS3. Why are you slow in washing plates? Why are you slow in doing this? Why are you dull? Amen. Now people complain that I'm too fast. Amen. Amen. If you just delay, I'm, I'm gone. What happened? Was it that it was it a training? No, sir. Boarding school did not put that in me majorly. What put that there was a divine encounter. 
Amen. Was what? A divine encounter. A divine encounter. A divine encounter. It, it, it redirected the life of Saul. You are busy pursuing after donkeys. Meanwhile, you are meant to be a king. You are meant to be a leader. You are meant to be a captain. So by that encounter, his destiny was redirected. Your destiny is being redirected this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the things that, may, that mess up people's destiny is going in the wrong direction. No matter how you travel fast in the wrong direction, you never get to your destination. No matter how fast you are, you never get to your destination. <laughs> I saw one clip that my friend showed me in Lokoja. Very wonderful clip. <laughs> a very, very wonderful clip. You know, it was a relay race. You know what you call relay race? Where one person will run and then hand over the button to the next person. That one will run. So, <laughs> this two children it was a school competition and then the bam they began to run this other guy gapped the, the, he got this his, this other student he gapped him so well the distance was so far he ran then he handed over the button to the next the guy turned and faced the direction this, <laughs> he turned and instead of him to keep running he turned and started running the open, <laughs> he ran <laughs> Running the other way, the teacher shouted, "God!" <laughs> the woman was very happy that they were leading. But when that happened, uh, everything had dabaru. So the other one that was behind overtook. Nothing makes you to be overtaken like misdirection. Where people that you started at the same time, or people you seem to be ahead of them, are now ahead of you, and you are struggling to catch up. That is why one of the major things we pursue in life is divine direction. Amen. If God has spoken, it's better to move. And if God has not spoken, it's better to sit down. Anyone who remains after God has moved will expire. Amen. It's divine encounter that gives the direction. It was a divine encounter I had on that second day of July 2012, 10 a.m. when I was in the room and suddenly I found myself in the city of Lokoja where I've never been before at that time. And I saw myself in front of that school and I saw the name on the school. Amen. Crowd, crowd up secondary school something. Amen. And with inquiries discovered that was Lokoja. That was what took us to Lokoja. Divine encounter. And that was was what helped us to see the dimension of result and impact that God helped us to see. Hallelujah. But it was still the same encounter when God came to me on that Sunday morning when I was praying to go for the service early morning and said, Lord, bless your people, heal and deliver them. And the Lord came to me and said to me while I was on my knees, you shall soon relocate the headquarters of this church to day day in Abuja and Lokoja shall be branched. It is divine encounter. That is why there is no shaking. Amen. That is why there is no what? There is no shaking at all. Because I know what God does when God sends a man. Hallelujah. It is a divine encounter that brings direction. When we were running the ministry interdimensionally, it was a divine encounter that God said, No, this thing had the, the need a church base. The way you are doing it, that is not what I ordained. Otherwise, we will still be running that thing now. I will not be anywhere. Please sit down. Is somebody hearing God's voice at all this morning? The encounter that will redirect your life is coming your way in the name of Jesus. I say the encounter that will redirect your life is coming your way in the name of Jesus. Just one encounter that will release one instruction. And that instruction will change your life forever. Just one encounter that will release one instruction. And that instruction will put a gap between you. And so many persons. Are we sleeping? Amen. Don't catch anybody sleeping. I've been awake since 2 o'clock. Amen. Number three. Divine encounter connects you to divine resources. Somebody say divine resources. Somebody say divine resources. Malakai. <laughs> the, the resources required for the assignment is located in the encounter. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 4 to 15, time we fail us to read elaborately. But in 1 Kings 3, 4 to 15, Solomon just became the king. And God, and he went down to Gibeon and sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. And God came to him and said, Hey, young man, ask me what I will give to you. It was in a dream, sir. But it was an encounter. 
And Solomon said, well, all I need is wisdom, discretion to guide all these people. And God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemy. You didn't ask for riches. You asked for wisdom. He said, I give you wisdom like no other person has had before you or after you. And apart from that, I give you riches that no one has had. And I also preserve your life. Amen. That was a divine encounter. So Solomon needed wisdom to run his assignment and the wisdom came. Solomon needed money to run his assignment and the money came. Those were men that built temple with gold. Imagine a church building that was gold. They used to build it. Amen. Those, those were men that, that, that had enough. They didn't lack the resources for the assignment. Listen to me. When God gives you an encounter, it connects you to material and financial blessings. Hallelujah. When God gives you an encounter, and God told me this morning, just this morning, while I was the president late morning, he showed me a shift in financial dimensions. I don't know why, but I've seen this about three times now within the last one month. I think I announced it the first time in Lokoja, right? I've seen it three times now where God so- showed me how massive money was being released. Amen. I don't want to call amounts now, but massive money was being released. Was being released, and I believe it will it will impact us as the commission, and that means it will spread to your life as an individual. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, it connects you with divine ideas. There are people whose mind are not working, bankrupt of idea. That's why they are poor. Amen. Bishop David, the way they if you can think enough, what you have is enough. If you can think well. Amen. What you have is enough. But several persons are suffering blockage of mentality. Amen. They can't see any opportunity around because the devil has blinded their minds. So when God wants to change the life of a man, one of the things he does is to give you an idea. And when you begin to run with that idea, you begin to see a change. Hallelujah. So people who are in who have divine encounters are people whose mind are alive something is always dropping there God is dro- this is what next to do this is what next to do and as you take the step you see your life opening up hallelujah you don't need certificate to go far in life you need an encounter there are many persons with certificate they are frustrated amen, amen. I have several people that will finish university together many frustrated many are still seeking for job till now but God gave encounters and then with the encounters anything you are having becomes an advantage hallelujah divine resources divine what? divine resources God's servant Bishop David Oedeko said several years ago he was given a Mercedes best car as a gift what a wonderful car at that time nobody could have that kind of car was a big car at that time and then one day they had a church project and he was he, he, he was praying to God Lord I appreciate you Lord resources for this work and then he said according to him he said he saw the finger of God pointing towards the car and he said Lord what's that say give me that car so he went to his wife and told him God said we should give him the car and the woman said praise God and then he went back and then they sold the car and took the money and put it into God's work and he was checking home and he said on his way trekking home and the middle of the road God spoke suddenly my son David even if you don't want to be rich it is too late amen that is a man that is moving around the earth today and is rated as the richest pastor on the earth right now amen but several people are whining their mouth he has aircraft he has bam, 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 bam. they are talking but they didn't know where he started from with god amen they are whining their mouth but they don't know where the man started with god there are many places come on shoot they cannot release to god is it car they will not release to god I told my wife anything that we have at any time it can go so I don't have attachment for anything that car can you can come tomorrow I don't see it where is it that's gone amen as a student I've dropped answers inside inside offering basket as a student God said I need answers eh? as the basket is coming put it inside now just remove the sim card drop it there that answers have no use up to one month amen, 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 amen. computer systems have gone Amen. I've gone. There is no attachment to it. Anything can go if it is God. 
Hallelujah. But one encounter that God will give to you will change your life forever. We connect you. You become in command of financial resources. You won't be begging to feed. You won't be struggling to, 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 to have the, the essential things of destiny. Brethren, pray for divine encounter to change your financial status. Pray for divine encounter to be. say no more lack and want. I say no more lack and want. There was a time where the ministry account was there. Our own personal account was there. Everything was there. And then it's just like, as long as you are winning souls and you are doing my work, I will take care of you. I still have somewhere I'm going to. Amen. <laughs> just relax. Nothing is happening. We are going somewhere. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. Somebody invited us to miss in an all night in Lokoja by 11. That was Saturday evening. And I was in Kaduna State University preaching. So I finished from there and traveled down. I arrived Lokoja around 7, 8. Went home, ate something. And then from there to go, and to, go to the vigil that day. Then to come back around 3, 4 a.m. to minister by 8 a.m. in the church. And so when we entered into Lokoja, <laughs> tire busted. And they were guys, hey, relax, just relax yourself. <laughs> we are going somewhere. Hallelujah. Relax yourself. We are going. Men of encounters, women of encounters cannot be wasted. A thousand might fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it cannot come nigh you. That's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. And finally, divine encounter brings destiny fulfillment. Destiny fulfillment. Destiny fulfillment. Destiny fulfillment. Satisfaction is only possible in God. When God meets a man, he satisfies you. You are at a point of peace, a point of rest, a point of joy. You have not yet attained all you want to attain, but there is a joy. There is a satisfaction that is in you. Hallelujah. You are not dissatisfied. You are not living a life that is grumbling, doing things grumbling around. You are merely struggling to survive. No, but you are living a life where whatever you are doing, you are enjoying it because you, are, you, are, you, are, you have had an encounter with God. Hallelujah. You have had what? An encounter with God. Whatever, whether it's a kara, you are frying, or you are a teacher, or you are an accountant, or a doctor, whatever you are doing, you are doing it satisfied because it's not a job that is satisfying you, but God that has encountered you. There are people who have lived and died unsatisfied. They hustled. They got all the PhD, everything. And you felt these men are great men, but they are unsatisfied. They are what? One medical student called, we spoke when he was in 500 level. And he said to me, he said, if I had known, bah, say, there will be no need for this course I'm reading. That's medicine. He's a doctor now. He's a doctor right now. But he came to a point where he lost passion. So he's now doing the job for a reason of thought. I already let me make money. No satisfaction. Only Jesus can give satisfaction. Destiny fulfillment comes by divine encounter. Destiny div- fulfillment comes by what? Divine encounter. What is my key to divine encounter? Only one key, a heart for God. That is what I need for a divine encounter. Second Chronicles 16 9. We have to read this one together. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9. Can we read together? What does it say? One to go. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Who is he looking for? In search of them to show himself strong in the behalf of them who sons are perfect towards him. Hearing that has done foolishly therefore from henceforth that shall have all. When you see the word perfect in the scripture, it's talking about sincerity. Sincerity of heart. It's not talking about somebody who does not have faults. From Genesis to Revelation, there's nobody who doesn't have any faults. Amen? Is he Abraham? Is he Isaac? Is he Jacob? They have all human flaws. Is he David? He has human flaws. Saul, Paul, all of them have human faults. Amen? Jesus was without sin. Amen? Jesus was without sin. 
But if you examine his life as a human being, you will see certain times where he took some actions and you wonder why did he act like that. For instance, somebody's father died. And he came and said, he said follow me. He said, let me go and borrow my, bury my father. He said, let the dead bury their dead. You come and follow me. Wouldn't you be angry? You see that? So naturally speaking, nobody can, be, can, can match what you call perfect. Nobody. Amen. But when God says those whose heart are perfect was him, he's talking about those who are sincere. Those who are what? Those who are what? Sincere. Sincerity. A heart that genuinely goes after God is a heart that will always have divine encounters. Every day your heart is yearning for God. Give me a touch. Lord, g- give me spiritual blessings. You see, People don't understand there's a difference between spiritual blessings and material blessings. If I give you a hundred thousand, for instance, now you will use it and finish it. But if I release upon your life the anointing for wealth, money never finishes from your life. Amen? Amen. Blessings never finish from your life. <laughs> Turn around never escapes your life. Praise God. Please, whatever it is, don't sweep anything now. It's not time for sweeping. Sit down. It's a distraction. (laughs) Sweeping was before service. (laughs) Amen. Amen. That's divine encounter. Is somebody are you hearing me as I'm summarizing this this morning? That's the that's encounter. There are things God gives to you and your life is changed forever. For instance, I never get stranded. Never. There is no situation that I sit down and don't know what to do. There is always what to do. It always comes. And one, two, three, four options will come. Amen. Then I choose the one that is best. Ah, people are wondering what do we do here now. Ah, sir, what do we do now? I just give you two. Ah, do like, do like. Say, ah, I didn't see it before. I laugh. Amen. I just laugh. Some people were trying to bring something out of the room. They were struggling. We were packing. They were struggling to bring it out of the room in the house in Lokoja. Trying to struggle. And then I came. So, Ah, I look at it, turn it like this. The guy turned his case. Ah, now we hear the suffer sins. <laughs> Amen. God will, you see, crave, have a heart that craves after spiritual things. Amen. Amen. Lord, give me the anointing. And the anointing will give me an, an audience. Hallelujah. They said to John Wesley, how is it they know he was preaching somewhere and they banished him from there? And said, don't preach in our land. So he went and climbed up of his father's grave. He said, at least my father's grave, nobody can pursue me. <laughs> and started preaching. And 7,000 people gathered in the father's grave. So journalists came and said, why is it that people are looking for you to the point of grave? He said, it's simple. He said, I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. Amen. That God has given him the fire. All he needs is to stand somewhere and people will appear. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the, you, need, you need to crave after the Lord. Give me something. Give me what? Something. I can't forget the day God came to me while I was fasting and praying. And he said to me, he said, as for you, this is my covenant with you. My word, my spirit that I put in you and my word that I put in you will never depart out from your mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed now and forever. Amen. It initiated me into a realm of divine revelation. Amen. A realm of what? Divine revelation. Flow of revelation. Flow of God's anointed word. Hallelujah. You need to crave for divine encounter. God touch me. Let your heart crave genuinely for things that God will give to you that will establish your destiny. Hallelujah. The question I have for you this morning is what your what is your heart craving after? That is why anytime I'm praying or anytime I'm leading worship or anything, my highest point is the point of Lord, you is you I'm looking for. Amen. Anything that is happening around, the moment I hear anything about I'm looking for God, it, it arrests my attention 100%. Even if it's a small boy that is saying it. 100%. Because that is the craving of my heart. I am looking for things that create other things. Jesus said, labor for the meat that does not perish. Stop looking for what will perish. Houses can come up and go down. Amen. But there is something God gives to you. You become an estate commander. 
You build estates all around the world without challenge. That one is more crucial than receiving peanuts to build. Amen. When you look for men to help you, they give you things that will help you to survive. Then when he finishes, you look for another man to help again. No man can give you what will keep you forever. No man. Even if he really wants to do himself, he's limited. So his limitation becomes your limitation. But when God is the one that gives, and when God is the one that gives, he gives to you what creates wealth. Have you forgotten Deuteronomy 8.18? Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. He give you what? Power to get wealth. So what you should be craving for is, Lord, give me power for wealth. Give me what? Power for wealth. This morning, you must make up your mind. A heart for God. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands to heaven. And thank him for this brief word that we have had. A heart. A heart. A plans of time. That is the key to encounters. That is the key to encounters. A heart that craves for him. A heart that craves for him. Moses said, I beseech you, show me your glory. That was a heart that craved for God. Is your heart craving after God this morning? Lift up your voice and express, express that heart cry to him. Express that heart cry to him. Express that heart cry to him. Express that heart cry. Tell him, Lord, my heart, I am hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you. Was the deep wanted for the waters so my soul longer after thee. You are Lord of my heart. Desire and I long to love you. As the dew parted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. You alone. You are Lord of my heart, desire and I long to go
Ne, ni oda sumos mo, da ne vti. Lift up your voice and ask God to give you divine encounter. That will train your life. Lift up your voice, say, Father. Say with me, say, Father, today I ask for a divine encounter. I ask for a divine encounter that will connect me to my spiritual heritage. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. in the name of Jesus Christ we pray say with me father give me an encounter that will connect me to divine direction lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice and pray an encounter that will connect me to divine direction an encounter that will connect me to divine direction Lord give me an encounter that will connect me to divine direction I am na 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 la nega ni no mo lo no mo ye nega 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 na ba la ba na ba la ba la ba. Give me an encounter that will connect me to divine direction that will give my life a direction that will give my life a meaning that will give my life a direction that will give my life a meaning. Give me an encounter that will connect me to divine direction. Matere mano malaga na malamas. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Say with me, Father, give me an encounter that will connect me to resources. To resources. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. To resources. An encounter that will connect me to resources. An encounter that will connect me to resources. The resources that I need. Financial resources. Material resources. La caparate sunamaena. Give me an encounter that will connect me, Lord. Rabba sunematani lega la balanas. Rabba da balaga na maya na laga na balanas. La balana ga na maya na balanas. La brano zalega na mana la maliana. Rabba da balaga na maya na balaga na. I capara de sona mana la ba. An encounter that will connect me to divine resources. La godo bara la baza na malaba. Rabba da balaga na maya na balaba. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. So, me, Father, give me an encounter that will connect me to divine preservation. In the name of Jesus, lift up a voice and pray. That will connect me to divine preservation. An encounter that will connect me to the preservation. That will cause my life to be preserved. That will cause my destiny to be preserved. The Lord, give me an encounter that will connect me to divine preservation. Ay, 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 ay. Ilato kotolia kotolia kotol le kote migala tuna la bakataya jana matina la bala katina la bahanda le berega de bazuna malaga nama encounter 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 la kati preke zote preke te ele preko zani malata la barada baza na malika tuna jana malaga daga la balaga da la daga la balaga la malaga da la baraga la balaga da in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray.
Finally, say, Father, give me an encounter that will connect me to destiny fulfillment. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. La coprata sada brako shana mantala brada. Rabada kana malabano na ya tunaya. Ramana mana mana malaga na mayana. La barana mana gana mana na. Rabada bala kana mayana na. La barana mana gana mana. La barana gana mana mana. La barada gana mana gana. La barada gana mana gana. La barada gana la bala gana. La barada gana bala gana la bala. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Lift up your hands to heaven. I decree in the name of Jesus supernatural connection to your spiritual heritage in the name of Jesus. Every gift, every potential that you need for the fulfillment of destiny, it is released now into your life in the name of Jesus. I decree a supernatural connection to divine direction. From today, you will have clear direction for your life in the name of Jesus. I come against every confusion. I come against every misdirection. I come against every missing of road. I come against every guesswork. And I decree this over in the name of Jesus. I decree the light of heaven shine on your path in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today I decree a connection to divine resources. Whatever it is that causes your hand to be dry, causes your pocket to be dry, causes your account to be dry, by the mystery of supernatural encounter this morning. I decree this over in the name of Jesus. From the north, the south, the west, the east, what belongs to you enters into your hand. In the mighty name of Jesus. Divine ideas that you need to connect resources. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, I decree divine preservation upon your life. Divine preservation upon your life. They said when they went from one nation to another, from one people to another, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved things for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. I decree from today you are untouchable. From today you are untouchable. From today you are untouchable in the mighty name of Jesus. And from today you are connected to destiny fulfillment, satisfaction, fulfillment in destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. You will not leave this earth unsatisfied. You will not leave this earth unfulfilled. All that God has created you to be, you shall be. All that God has created you to do, you shall do. And all that God has created you to achieve, you will achieve. And at the end of the day, you will make heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Before today is over, you will have an encounter that will translate your life forever. Be either by the word, either by dreams and revelations, either by whatever means the spirit of God brooding in you. But before today is over, you will have a solid encounter that will cause your life to count. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus precious name. Lift up your hands and give God thanks for what he has done within this short time that we had this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm seated. Yes, it He touched my life with his hands. My life changed. He touched my life with his hands. And my life became a new one. Jehovah touched my life with his hands. My life changed. Sing, he touched my life. He touched my life with his hands. My life changed. In Abukotia, Lidon Tasanta. He touched my life with his hands. And my life became a new one. Jehovah touched my life with his hands. My one more time, sing it touch my life, it touch my life with his hands. My life changed, sing it touch my life, it touch my life with his hands. And my life became a new one. 
Jehová tus palabras en Thank you, Father. If you are blessed this morning, put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we have been charged.